Today on Real Life, Healed from Autism. Get ready as Dr. Reg Marias ministers through his powerful testimony and prophetic word. And do you trust your heart? The Sister to Sisters give good advice to a friend in need. Plus, on the good news, the American Idol judge who broke out into worship with a contestant. That's today on Real Life. Hello and welcome to Real Life, a very special place where we can gather in God's presence and learn about His perfect purpose for our lives, a place where we can hear wonderful testimonies from believers, and a place where we can encourage one another. I'm Tom McGuff, and I'll be your host for this program. And joining me to co-host are Sydney <laughs> Goldman yeah, yeah, yeah. and Amy hey. Schaefer. Welcome. Good day. And a big welcome to you. We're so glad that you're going to be a part of this today, this hour, and it's going to be a very, very special one. Well, we always like to begin with the Word of God because His words don't return vain. Now, this is our scripture for today. This is Psalm 4610. And this is a wonderfully powerful passage and I believe really speaks into the heart of what this hour is going to be about. And it says simply, be still and know that I am God. I've transliterated that in my life and I've, I've changed that a little bit to be still and God may my life acknowledge, take that root word of no, acknowledge you as our God. Right. That is so good. I love that verse about being still and just standing in the midst of his presence and just knowing like no matter what storms are surrounding mm. you, no matter what circumstances you're dealing with, it's amazing when you can just get into the stillness, when you can just sit. There's sometimes in my life where I'll just sit and be like, okay, God, it's just me and you. And I just want to hear what you have to say. I don't want to add anything or try to say certain things, but I just want to be still and just experience your love and your embrace around yeah. me. Well, and I think we live in such a culture we that do. is so busy. I mean, I just, I look at my life. I'm in my mid forties and I'm a parent and I'm a wife and I'm, you know, a business chick and a pastor <laughs> and life is so full and so jam packed Always and so replete. busy that you really have to be strategic. You have to be intentional to set apart time with God. That's I mean, right. it, it's not an option. I cannot live. I cannot move. I cannot have my being without him in my life. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like in your life? When do you be still and know that I, it, maybe it's in your car when you're carpooling kids everywhere to practices. Maybe it's early in the morning. Mm, not my favorite time. <laughs> maybe it's in the afternoon. Maybe it's late in the evening. But just take time and be intentional with spending time with God. Intentional is the right word. Would you believe last <laughs> Thursday, I'm on the parkway, and it's rush hour and, and I just passed the Bates Street exit and I'm coming out of town and going 55 miles an hour is the traffic and my car dies. Oh, no. I'm in the center lane, oh. rush hour traffic, I'm heading out of town. Oh, and I have to tell you, <laughs> that verse came to my heart. Wow. Just be still and know that I am God. Yeah. And you know what? God safely got me out of that situation. Yeah. Some, on another occasion, I have to tell you all, yeah. of the, all of the funny details of it. But there I am in the center lane. But even there, we can be still right. and acknowledge him, him as God. Well, after that scripture, I like the one after it. Here is why you can be still That's and right. know that I am God. Because the Lord Almighty is with us mm. and the God of Jacob is our fortress. That's Praise why you God. can be still and know that he's God. He's with you. He's our fortress. He's our refuge. He's the one we run to. He's the one we seek after. God's got your back and God can handle Ooh. any problem. No problem is too big for God. Yeah, right. well, you're, you're sharing your story, Tom, about being stuck in the center lane of traffic. I think that's just <laughs> even a metaphor for life because sometimes <laughs> we're going full speed ahead, all things, and then it's out, you, you lose control. You that's lose, right. It's yeah. just like, oh my gosh, like what am I going to do? But it's so amazing in those moments that when we lose control, when, you know, God kind of Mess, messes up our plans a little bit, that when we're in his stillness, that he gets us back on track, that he gets us to our destination right on time. And so sometimes I think he makes us break down a little bit. You know, sometimes <laughs> things get in the way, but all things work together for our good. So we just want to encourage you today that no matter what lane of life that you're in, just know Ooh. that God is with you and just be still and know that he's driving and he's in control. 
That's a very, very good word. And today on the program, we're going to be uh, match, meeting up with the sisters uh, yeah. and they're going to be telling us, kind of answering the question, do you follow your heart? Yes. You know, when it comes to decision making and, and it follows along with our, our scripture. Yeah, too. we also have Dr. Reg Marias here and God healed him of autism, mm. of OCD and Asperger's. And I promise you're going to want to hear what he has to wow. say through the ministry of Dr. Young I Cho, who is a legend in the faith. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, and then a little later on, we have the good news. So I'm really excited to share a story with you about an amazing moment that happened on American Idol. So stay tuned. Well, Coming up, do you trust, you know, Tom was just talking about this, your heart to tell you what is right. The sisters are going to share what they have to say. Hello, hello, welcome to this segment of Sister to Sister. We're so glad that you've tuned into real life so that we can come into your home today. And we have a great question for you. Well, the sisters have a great answer for you. And here it is. What do you say when someone else says they trust their heart to tell them what is right? Hmm. Well, Corey. I have my standard answer to this that you and Amy do not like. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Your emotions will betray you and your heart will betray you. And the Bible agrees with me on this. And that is Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things. Oh. But I do agree with that. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I wrote down, if you're listening to your heart, you're listening to your feelings, your emotions, your own intellect, your own personality, all mixed into one. You have to listen to the voice of God. The Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you, instruct you, direct you. The Word of God will lead you, guide you, instruct you. And if God speaks to you in your heart, then it's going to line up with the Word of God. Amen. And so don't ever just go with the flow with what your heart is saying because that can lead you. I mean, I didn't mean go with the flow. flow. <laughs> I mean, like... That's a, that, that's a, old, that's a different flow. Yeah, yeah, I think because, yeah. you know, I, I, would I... Would I, I Sometimes I'm just in awe when I hear the answers. I, I and I don't know how to come and, and bounce back. I don't. I, you, I just I'm like so not good at it because. But I'm always blessed to watch. I, I love this platform because, and I hope that you all are learning because you can see and hear the growth. You know what I mean? Because there are people who believe I should be led by. And at one time, some of us did too, you know? And then you'll listen and you'll see how the Holy Spirit has done a work and then it, it changes, you know? And I am a firm believer in, in the, the Word of God. I don't need to add anything to it. I don't need to take anything away from it. You cannot be led by your heart. Mm -hmm. So what you said, oh, Kathy, you're not going to like this, because I am very emotional. Mm -hmm. So I trust my gut. But what Flo well, has said, mm -hmm. it's and what Amy yeah. is alluding to, that's yeah. my spirit. Yeah. I have mm -hmm. to say that over the years of being around you girls mm -hmm. and being in more in the Word of God, I mean, I've been a Christian for a long yeah. time, but I haven't been in the Word of God as much as I am. When I have to study and prepare for my sister to sister, questions, guess what I do? I go into the Word. Amen. So right. when Amen. I'm in the Word of God, then that is planted into my heart. And then, yeah. like Corey is saying, right. then God speaks in my spirit. Yeah. So what's coming out of my emotions is yeah. Him. Amen. So you're right. That's good. Amen. What do you say, sister? <laughs> well, it does say it in the Word, and I've got to agree that the heart is not only deceitful, but the way of man, the scripture says can lead to death. That's right. yeah. It seems right in your heart because you're coming with your own circumstances, right. your own feelings, a love for yourself in a way that may not be pleasing to God doing certain things. But the word also says that I have hid the word in my heart that I might not sin against you, O Lord. So if you've gone to the word, if you've hid it in your heart, you're not just blabbing it out somewhere, but it's goes deep down in there, you have an understanding, and you're speaking confirmation of what the Word already says to you, yeah. then yes, your heart might be right. 
because you have mm -hmm. turned it around, your feelings, Amen. your emotions, Amen. and so on. You're agreeing with God not just with self. Have you ever heard the thing where it just didn't feel right? Mm -hmm. Like you're in a circumstance or something. Well, I was doing a health care seminar and a doctor said, this is this kind of speaks to this, if, if you're having a test or you feel something might not be right, you feel it in your gut that something's not right, talk to your doctor about it. So in other words, it, 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 you feel it in your gut, you feel it in your heart, you feel it in your spirit. As Christians, we feel it in our spirit. Something's just not quite right. Mm -hmm. So I think this speaks to this, God puts in our heart, something's not quite right. So it's different because that was a, a, a physical thing, but I like this, when, when your heart has the word of God, mm -hmm. oh Flo, you've got the face, what? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Jesus, oh. take the wheel and drive fast. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's, it's just that I'm concerned because we keep saying the heart, and you can't take away from the word. Well, you can't. Word and I there. think that, no, no, because what you're describing <laughs> is my spirit. There's something called a spirit of discernment. Mm -hmm. There's a gift of discernment, and in my spirit, I don't feel something. But I've, I've been led by my heart. I have allowed my heart to lead me. I wasn't always where I'm at today. You hear Flo talking today, yes. but this isn't the same Flo that if you'd have been with me 20 years ago, 10 years ago, I was, you know, I was led, but I felt, oh, it, it was a good thing. So I did it. That didn't mean it was a God thing. Now I know better. There were times I was led by my heart. And, and then, I, you know, later on as I grew in God, I learned that, Flo, you shouldn't be being led by your heart. So I just don't want us to ever take away from the word. 11 seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. Seven seconds. And Six it's, seconds. It's five good. seconds. <laughs> Four, three, two. <laughs> we love you. We are sister and sister. We're going to come back with more of this. Do you like this talk? I do. And I am right now led by Flo. We'll see you next time on Sister to Sister. All right, a brisk discussion all about the heart. Do you let your heart tell you what to do, guys? I try not to. I try not to because there, there's no good going to come of that. But um, there's, there's wonderful proverbial wisdom, yeah. and it says to trust in the Lord yeah. with all of your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. In all of your ways acknowledge Him. Mm -hmm. See, because um, we're going to be deceived, and, and, and we're going we're gonna to pick up on the wrong thing. So, so no, we consciously, intentionally can't listen to our hearts. Yeah, that is so true, Tom. And I just want to give a big shout out to John, our producer, because as I was watching the segment, <laughs> there was a song that listened to your heart and he looked it up as by Roxette. And so even the world tells you to listen to it your sure heart does. and that goes so against God's word. And even the scripture that Corey brought up, you know, above all things, the heart is deceitful above all things. And even in my own life, so I'll just take it back, you know, when I think of, <laughs> oh, I'm dating this guy. And they're like, well, just follow your heart. Ah! And it's like, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, it's like red flag, red flag, red flag, exactly. you know? So I think exactly. it's so important for us to, you know, seek God and just, you know, you can't trust in your heart. You can't trust in your emotions, but that's why it's so wonderful. You know, we have Jesus and he gave us the Holy Spirit. And if you're struggling with the heart issue, if you're wrestling with the decision, we just encourage you to call our prayer line right now at 888-665-4483. We have prayer partners that are standing by that would love to talk to you about whatever you're going with. And so they can give you some proverbial wisdom, like you said, Tom, mm -hmm. you know, to lead you on the right path because we really want what's best for you because I know there's been multiple times in my life, my heart led me into some crazy things where I'm like, well, Jesus, get me out of this. Yeah. <laughs> I think sometimes too, there needs to be a real clarity about listening to the spirit of God in you. You're listening to your spirit man, listening to the Holy Spirit versus the heart. There's like this fine line mm -hmm. because you're, because you're a physical being, you know, but you're a spiritual being, you live in a body and you possess a soul. And so we're dealing with these three realms of man. And sometimes point, that, that soulish realm, that, that emotional and personality gets 
gets involved and it can really do what it wants. <laughs> you know, it's, right. it, can, it can lean towards sin and lean toward the lust of the eye and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. But when you listen to your spirit man, which sometimes I think people get cross with listening to your heart, because mm -hmm. don't you really want the spirit of God just all in your entire being with your thoughts and in your heart and in your life? I mean, we want to be dominated by the spirit of God and the Holy Spirit. So always lean into the voice of, the, of God that's speaking to you. And he always lines up with his word. That yeah. voice yeah. always lines up with the word. It you know, sure just reminds does. me of your, the scripture that you brought up that's about right. being still. That's right. how again. you can, you know, right listen to God and just he'll direct you and lead you and guide you. So yeah. that's so good. <laughs> yeah. It really, really, truly is important. Well, we just want you to know that you're very special to us. And we hope that you enjoy this little time that God gives us to be together. And we'd like you to be a friend officially. <laughs> we have a new friends club and we want to give you an opportunity to just join in uh -huh. to all of the fun and all of the moving of God that, that happens here at, at Cornerstone Television. And so we'd like you to call and just say, I want to be a new friend and I want to acknowledge that, that we're in a relationship and we have a gift for you. We have some of the wonderful books uh, from authors that have been on our program and we'd like to give you one of these and all you have to do to get your free book is to become a member of the New Friends Club. Call us at 888-665-4483. It is absolutely free. Yeah. All you have to do is make that call and get your free book and become a member of the New Friends Club. Oh, whenever you're holding up the books, I'm just brought back to those interviews and those, those men and oh, women that powerful. came. They're amazing men and women mm. of God and the content in their books will help you grow in God. They'll help you grow in your emotions. They'll help you grow in your faith. They're gonna help you grow and help you to learn how to be still and know that He is God. They're gonna help you in every way. Phenomenal books, no strings attached. Just give us a call and we wanna send you a gift. How cool is that? That's yeah. very cool. <laughs> And another thing too with the whole new friends club is that we want to know who you are. That's our whole heart. You know, we are proud that you're part of our family. That's so we right. just want to learn a little more about you. So when you call in and you say, hey, I want to be a friend of Cornerstone, we give you this free book, but we also want to hear about where you're from and where you are. So yeah, give us a call. Yeah, call in and give us your age, your weight, your height, <laughs> and just give us all the deed. I'm kidding. Nobody wants that information. <laughs> That's right. We just want to be friends. And we do thank you. Thank you for being a part of the special move of God. We are renewing the call to ministry at Cornerstone Television. Well, now let's go over to Tom Hollis for a very special interview. Dr. Reg Marias is the founder of Anoint the World Ministries and the senior pastor of Living Faith Community Church in Perth, Australia. That church has planted 610 churches around the world and they are seeing God move in mighty ways. Dr. Reg, it's great to have you on Real Life. Thank you all the way for having us. Really appreciate that. Well, I've heard a little bit of your story, mm -hmm. and it's all right if I call you Reg, right? Yep. <laughs> I'm very comfortable with Reg. Well, Reg, your story, uh, mm -hmm. you, you grew up in, in Singapore, mm -hmm. and you really struggled as a young person with some mental problems. Yes, sir. And, and can you just speak to that and what God did in your life? Uh, my mom and dad were nominal Christians. So I was the first child out of the two children that mom and dad had. But when I first came into this world, I uh, somehow or rather, my parents felt very strongly that I was very abnormal. Somewhere along the line, they did a test on me. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were early signs by the age of, say, three, four years of age. I had OCD, uh, severe OCD came about it. And then later on, I had autism came out. And then later on with Asperger's. So there were three wow. conditions. Wow. I remembered my, uh, my, uh, my then dad took me to to a, to a specialist about half an hour from, uh, from our home. And uh, the doctor did all the, uh, all the checkups on me. He eventually says to my dad, <clears throat> if your son continues where he's continuing on, I would say by the age of 16 or 18, he will, locked up, he will be locked up in a mental institution. Oh my goodness. And I remember dad was born in 1925. He came from the builder's generation, one who has gone through, you know, two, uh, one has gone through World War II with the depression and all the above. He's one of those men who will never cry. Mm -hmm. Those men of that generation don't right. believe in crying. But I remembered he turned around to a corner. He took his handkerchief and he was wiping his eyes off. 
I asked dad, is everything, is, is everything okay? Yeah, everything's all right. Everything is going to be good. And I remembered from that day onwards of something not right about me. Wow. Yeah. And uh, how old were you at this point? Oh, you're looking at about seven or eight years of age at that time. And you even struggled at that early age, didn't you, with uh, yes. just yes, sir. even wanting to go on? Yeah, I uh, tried to kill myself at the age of seven, eight, nine. <clears throat> uh, I was in my primary school, uh, in this elementary school when I was studying. I didn't understand anything which was taught to me. It's like people, ask, people often ask me, you know, what did you feel when you had autism? It's like this. If you have a boat and the boat is running through over a river or over an ocean, but if you jump in into the water, you will hear the buzzing noise of the outboard, outboard, outboard motor. Mm -hmm. and so I hear this outboard motor buzzing all through my ears. So, every, so everyone, including my parents, my teachers, any of my friends, when they will speak to me, I won't understand what they're speaking to me. There's a buzzing noise going through all, all day long. And so with this, I was bullied quite heavily. And I just felt, I think, no one taught me how to kill myself. I just said maybe ending my life will be the best thing. So, I, so my mom used to give me a, a bottle of cordial juice every day for recess. So I would find cockroach poison and rat poison around oh the schoolyard. And so I will then dissolve them, crush them, dissolve them, and I'll drink them. For some unknown reason, Doc, I, I, I don't understand. I, I, I could not kill myself. And I tried a number of times. I couldn't die. And then eventually I tried standing in front of cars, trucks, buses. And every time when the car or the bus or the truck is about to really, you know, about to hit me down, they will stop at the right at that point in time. And then they'll curse me and then they'll tell me, oh, why did you decide to stand? But I won't tell them I'm trying to kill myself. Mm -hmm. So this was my... So uh, I think that, that that brings us... I mean, <clears throat> so many are diagnosed with autism mm. or Asperger's, OCD mm -hmm. now that, that uh, uh, some parents are, say, are, are hearing this right now and even thinking, well, I've seen some of those types of tendencies in my child. But what's great is God has brought you through that now. What, mm -hmm. is the, how, what was the process that, that, to where you've brought, he's brought you through to this place of healing? Okay. As, my, as I said earlier on, my, my parents were nominal Christians, so they knew God, but they, were, but they were people who believe in a God of Good Friday, Easter, and Christmas. Right. Beyond that, there's no relationship with God. Somewhere along the line in 1980, oh, 1982, 1st of June to the 7th of June, there was a, yeah, there was a wonderful gentleman by the name of Yonggi Cho mm -hmm. from South Korea. Right. And so his ministry took, uh, they must have paid millions of dollars, Doc, and they took into the national newspaper and they took a huge size of the paper, two, three pages. They advertised, I'm coming down, I want you to experience Jesus. So my, my dad gets his paper, looks at it, reads at it. He says, well, someone is coming. I think it might be a little bit of a circus. We would love to go and see, check it out. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Yonggi Cho hired the single biggest national stadium where every game is played, 80,000 people can be packed in. So would you believe it or not, on that very first day, there were 80,000 people were packed in in that stadium wow. just to listen to him. He brought a very simple gospel. And on the very first day, my mom and dad gave their heart to Jesus. Mom got baptized in the Holy Spirit. She started speaking in tongues. I thought she has lost her mind. <laughs> I thought she lost her marble. And I did not know. It was, it was so hilarious. She took her hands up like this. And Dr. Yonggi Cho says, raise your hands up to those people who have given your heart to Jesus. I'm going to now baptize you in the speaking of tongues. She started speaking in tongues under the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And her hands was just up in the air. She could not bring the hands down. From a dark skin color, this both of the hands became purple in color. And no one could bring the hands down. Wow. And my dad was concerned. And eventually my dad had to bring her down and down to the stadium and there were a lot of pastors and my dad says, I don't know what's happened to, you, to, my, mom's, uh, to my wife's hands and then eventually a pastor prays and brings his hands down and she went back to normal. So out of that experience on the seventh day, the last day, I was still not convinced, although I was very confused with my three mental conditions I've got and I'm still trying to work it out, what God is trying to say, what God is trying to do in this, you know, this tongue-speaking business and all this above started to really freak me out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I remember Dr. Yonggi Cho said, this is your last day, this is your last moment. I will never come back again after this unless God tells me who would be the last party who wants to give your heart. And I remembered, I said, my Lord, I will give my heart to you. 
but I want to see whether you can heal me from my autism, Asperger's, and my OCD. And lo and behold, with that, with a great conf state of confusion, I gave my heart to Jesus. And then I remembered in 1982, October, there was a wonderful American pastor. He was ministering over there. He got me to be baptized in the speaking of tongues. Three mm -hmm. hours later, I got baptized in speaking of tongues. I was still not healed from autism, but I, was, but I had the tongues. He kept on saying to me, if you, kept, if you keep on speaking in tongues, son, I'm telling you right now, your autism will leave away. Exactly one year later, <clears throat> on the 7th of June, 1983, I was sitting down in my geography class. I felt there was a dark cloud passing over my head and something hit me and I stood in the middle of the class and in front of the 42 kids and the teacher, I said, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Teacher turns around, she said to me, you have disturbed the class, you are now suspended. She says to me, I don't know what's happened to you, but I prefer the rage yesterday than the rage today. <laughs> she saw something. She, she saw, saw something. something. And I, by the time I got suspended, I was the happiest kid outside of the school because I felt so normal. The buzzing of my ears stopped. I could hear everything crystal clear, everything pristine. Every single person when they speak to me was so good. So I said to myself, I need to test this healing. If God has totally healed me, I need to test this healing. Mm -hmm. So I said to God, God, can I have your permission? I don't know whether he gave me his permission or not, but I decided to do what I want to do. The following day, I went into the class, same class, geography class. I made the most noise in the class and I gave such a hard time to the teacher. She suspended me for the whole day. And I came out and I said to myself, I'm no longer the haunted. I am now have become the hunter. I tested myself, I realized, this autism has left me. That is an incredible story. And it, it didn't all happen at once. There mm -hmm. was a beginning and then there was a moment though. Yes, sir. Where, and, and you know, uh, again, this is bringing hope to, to many. Your mm -hmm. story brings hope to many that, mm -hmm. that, that uh, struggle with this. We wanna, we're gonna take a break, but we're gonna uh, come back and, and share on our next uh, session together about how God led you into ministry okay. from there. But uh, that is just a powerful, testimony for anyone who uh, sees a, a problem that they can't see the way out of. God has a way out. Amen. Amen. is what we're all about here at Cornerstone, and we want to find out who you are. Our new Friends Club is a place to get to know us better so we can learn about who's watching us. If you've never reached out to us before, we have a book gift to welcome you to Cornerstone. You'll also receive our monthly newsletter. Just call us and tell the prayer partner you'd like to join the new Friends Club. They'll also pray and intercede for you and your family. Call us at 888-665-4483. Connect with us today. We're back with Dr. Reg Marias, and we're sharing about uh, his ministry, and it's a ministry of seeing. And, and Reg, I'd like to ask you about that. Yes. Um, because you have, uh, God has given you what seems like a unique ministry. Maybe it shouldn't be so unique, but a, a ministry of seeing. In fact, you've seen the Holy Spirit, you've seen Jesus. Could you share a little bit about when that first happened? Mm. Um, but before we go, the first part of it, I think you need to know, one of the things I, that, that I often find that people seem to relish and enjoy the success, but people don't seem to realize there's always a sacrifice that you have to do. And I want yeah. to touch that part sure. before the exciting part comes in. Mm -hmm. So by the time God heals me from autism, Asperger's, my OCD, 
I started to speak to God and started to say to God, you know, he started to speak to me, I want you to go into full-time ministry. I said, I've got no issues of going full-time ministry. But I said to God, if you want me full-time ministry, then I need to see you face to face. I don't want to go into full-time ministry carrying the word, looking at the Bible. I said, anyone can teach, anyone can preach. You have to go to a theological seminary, get your three-year degree, four-year degree. You come out, refine, polish, you could do all the above. But then I said to God one day, I said, if people were to come and ask me, have you ever seen Jesus face to face? I said, what sort of answer can I give? Mm -hmm. And so I have been hungering before God and having a passion before God and telling God by the age of 16, can I see you face to face? Can I see you face to face? And so sometimes I have got this terrible attitude of myself. I said, if you don't show your face, then I won't enter into ministry. I tried that blackmailing with God. It didn't work. <laughs> I, I do all those sort of blackmailing on a regular basis. It didn't work. Eventually, God said to me, I want you to go. And I, I, this is where I decided to leave Singapore. At the age of 20, I left Singapore and felt very strongly God is saying to me, I want you to go to Australia. Mm-hmm. And that's where you're going to be settled in. That's where I'm calling. And I enrolled myself for a four-year bachelor's and undergrad, minist- uh, undergrad degree where I obtained my bachelor's in ministry in a fi- uh, one of the finest institutions in Australia. And then as I came out of the institution, I felt I, I wanted to go- get back home to Singapore because that's yeah. the place I was born and raised, educated. God said to me, no, these are your people. No longer Singaporeans are your people. These are the people I'm calling. I want, I'm calling you for the Australians. I said, okay, God, if you want me to, if you want me to be here, I'll be here. And so I started my ministry, and, um, and I started my ministry, uh, you know, people gave me, you know, people gave me the time to go and minister in connect groups, and people, you know, people started coming to my life and all the above. And eventually, subsequently, I just felt very, uh, you know, very strongly that uh, after 10 years of ministry, I did not see Jesus. Hmm. And I go to every church and I minister and I see, you know, I, I, I know people, you know, pastors will come and say to me, your preaching of the word was fantastic. The way you divide the word was good. It's full of revelation. It's full of revelatory, what God is making. Yeah. Eventually, some, sometime later, I was doing some ministry in parts of Asia. And then I did a transit in Singapore. As I did a transit in Singapore, I saw my, uh, me mom and dad. And I said to my parents, I have, by now I, I've become sick and tired to be in the ministry. I said to my parents, I said, I'm leaving ministry. And I remember dad, wow. again, is about to cry, but he's not going to cry because, as I said earlier, he's a builder's generation. He does not believe. He used to tell me, men should not cry. That's, I remembered all the time, men should not cry. And I remembered he really, really honed me on that. And I, and I remembered because he also paid my entire Bible college fees. He said to me, why are you doing that? I said, Dad, I don't see demons leaving. I don't see healings taking place. I said, when I look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Jesus that I know of, there are 35 powerful miracles he did in, mm-hmm. in the lives. Bible says, in the book of John says, I wish I could write more, but I can't because this book can't contain the, the things that Jesus has done. Right. So with this, you know, with, the, you know, with this information, I don't, I don't think some of my parents appreciated me. So this was in Changi International Airport. So from that airport, then I flew into Perth International Airport. As soon as I got in, this was in 1997. As soon as I got in, September 1997, I got into Perth International Airport and I gave my bags to the border customs officers. They took my bags out and they were about to do it. And right at that minute, the entire Perth International Airport, or certainly that segment where I was standing with the, uh, with the officers, everything became cloud. Everything became white cloudy. And all of a sudden, I could I, I couldn't no longer see the officers. They started to become distant, 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 and I could only see pure white clouds. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, at the back, there was a voice. The voice says, we want to talk to you. And this voice says, and then eventually he comes up to me, I am the Holy Spirit. And I said, uh, I said what, what's happened? They do not know what's going on. We have made them to forget what's going on. You are in a time warp right now. There is a person in this, in this airport. He wants to meet you. And I'll still, I, uh, I become emotional about that particular segment every, every time when I, uh, I share this story. And then all of a sudden he says, turn on your right hand side. This person wants to see you. It was Jesus, face-to-face wow. encounter. And then he wow. says, this is a Jesus you've been asking for the last 16, uh, uh, from the age of 16. And I looked at him. I, I knelt down. I couldn't see. I could only see right up over here. 
if I, if I take my eyes and if I bring it, my eyes to his face, my eyes gets blinded. It's as though like a million voltage of flur- fluorescent lights is hitting him. But his voice is pure, clean, and you can still see him, but your eyes get blinded. And I did not know whether I had to, I, I, I don't know whether I had to scream, hysterically cry, or laugh. All the emotions simultaneously, it's happening to me right now. And Jesus says, I heard your conversation with your parents. Mm-hmm. I hear that you want to call it a quits with your ministry. Is that true? I said, yes, my Jesus. I want to call it a quits once and for all. Why can I ask you that? I said, whatever you did in the Bible, I can't do it. Mm-hmm. I said, what's the point of entering the ministry when I can't perform all the things you said? I, I quoted him. I said, you say in the book of John, because I go to my father, he shall do greater works than greater what I've done. Yeah, he said, exactly. where is it, my Lord? I can't see that happen. And he says to me, well, today I've decided to grant your desire. And so the Holy Spirit says the entire time, listen to what Jesus is telling you right now. And he said, what do you want? I said to him, I said to him, I love the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, but I like one particular gifting. Which one do you want? I said, I want the gift of word of knowledge. Why do you want? I said, I want to prove to people that there is a God who knows, who knows, who knows their pains, their sorrow, their agony. That's why I'm asking for. Mm-hmm. He said, I, I, and then I said to me, I said to him, I, I don't want to be taught by anyone. I need to be taught by you. He says, okay. And he says, the next 15 months, I will come with you every single service and I'll enter into the building. And when I enter into the building, you'll fold your Bible and I'll stand with each person on my right hand, on every right hand side of shoulder. I'll put my hands up. As I put my hands up, I will have a TV screen for you, a huge LCD plasma TV screen. <laughs> I will show their past, their present, and their future. It runs like a movie. And you will tell them exactly what you see, but you'll only tell them 25%. 75% will be confidential. That will be retained by you and me, and you have to pray for them. I said, will this happen? Yes. And then, I, and, and then it, in, all in all, Doc, it was 15 minutes conversation to cut the story short. Eventually, he had an angel, and the angel came, and there was a, there was a document, a scroll. In that document, he has drafted all the points that he had to do. And then there was a pen. He takes a pen. It's a heavenly pen. He signs under the dotted line. He said, when you sign on this dotted line, you are going to serve me for the rest of your life. You can't whinge. You can't complain. But I've given you this gifting right to the last breath. You have to do what I'm calling you to do. So right. I finally signed it. He said, I'll see you soon. Exactly, wow. exactly to his words. The very first service I was preaching, all of a sudden I'm doing my preaching. And three quarters of the way, Jesus steps in. And so exactly to his words, for the next 15 months, he kept on doing this in every service. The last service, he comes up to me. He says, my contract and my agreement has come to an end with you. But I'll always be with you. I'll always come and speak to you. And then he says, from now onwards, the Holy Spirit will be with you. He will coach you the rest of it. I have taught you all the giftings, primarily the gift of word of knowledge. And so that's how it started. That is... (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I'm speechless, <laughs> folks. I'm speechless right now. That is an incredible story, Reg, and, and, and an amazing story. And wow. and but God has given you this ministry mm-hmm. of the word of knowledge, mm-hmm. of being able to know things and being able to see things. Mm-hmm. And uh, when we get together our, in our next session, we're going to talk uh, uh, more about what God is doing with that right now and how you're able to impart that to other people. Would love to. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>